Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number. Today is our lesson number 155. 155, and we are going to do problem number 15 and 16 on 5, 485. 485, 155, day number 155, and we are on page number 485 in the, in the middle of doing the problems for the practice test number 2 at the very end of the book on page 585. Please turn to it, page 585, make sure that the book is in front of you. We're going to do problem number 6. Problem number 15 and 16 uh, on the, that you see on the blackboard. Let's look at number 15. It says the income in 2004 was 20% greater than the income in 2003. For some person, it really doesn't matter how they phrase it, Aisha's income, whoever's income, her income in 2004 was 20% greater than what it was in 2003. The question simply is what's the ratio of the income, what's the ratio of her income in 2004 to 2003? So what we're looking for is the ratio of her income from 2004 to 2003, we have to pay attention. Is the income of two, 2004 to 2003, 2004 goes on the top. Income, income in 2004 to, to, to her income in 2003. But the problem is they don't tell you what the incomes are in these two years. So what do we do? We don't do anything. We just make up a number. Just pretend, pretend that her income in 2003 was 100. If her income in 2003 was $100, if the income in 2003 was $100, it went up by 20% in 2004. Income in 2004 was 20% greater. So if it's $100 in 2003, in 2004, must have, must have been $120. The units are going to go away. Divide top and bottom by z uh, 10, and you're going to have a 10 over 12, which is same as, rather 12 over 10, which is same as 6 over 5. The answer is 6 to 5. The answer is six to five. And that's answer choice. That's answer choice C. That's answer choice C. And if you're curious, about two thirds of people, about two thirds of people took the exam had no trouble with this question. They got it right. Sixty-six percent of people got it right. Let's take a look at this one. It says Jacob's weekly income is n dollars. His weekly income is n dollars. We are further told that out of that n dollar, he spends four fifth of that amount. He spends four over n. 4, 4 times n over 5, which is same as saying 4 fifths of n. He spends 4 fifths of the n, 4 fifths of his income, and he saves the rest. If he spends 4 fifths, he saves a fifth of his income. The question simply is, at this rate, how many weeks will it take him to save $500? To save $500. Let's find out, shall we? It's an algebraic problem. It's an algebra problem. And just like any other algebra problem on the exam, when we come across an algebra problem, a word problem, we have two choices, as always. We can either do it algebraically, or we can simply plug in some numbers, some some number, whatever numbers that you want to plug in, they work numbers that work fine, and just do it that way. Which way should we do? Let's do it both ways. Let's do, let's plug in numbers first. Plug in numbers first, because that's what most people will do in the exam. Let's plug in numbers. What do you want to plug in? So here's the solution. Just plug in anything you like. Just, just plug in. What should we plug in? Just plug in anything you like. Let, let n equal to 500, let's say. Because 500 is 4 times n over 5. 500 will divide nicely with 5. You understand? So if that's the, that's the value of n, then that implies, that implies that he spends, he spends right here. 4 fifth, 4 fifth times n, because this, this thing is same as 4 fifth times n. 4 n over 5, 4 n over 5 is same as 4 fifth times n. So if n is 500, then that implies that he spends 4 fifth of $500. 5 and 500, let's divide, let's, let's divide top and bottom by 5, and we end up with 
100 times 4, which of course makes perfect sense because we know that he's, he spends four fifths of his income and he saves one fifth. One fifth of 500 is 100 dollars. He saves 100 dollars and spends 400. Right here, four times 100. So he spends 400 dollars. That means that implies that he saves, saves 100 dollars a week. He saves 100 dollars a week. Well, that means it will take him, it will take him five weeks to save $500. What do we do next? Well, we go through the answer choices and see which one works out. Answer choice A says, answer choice A says, 500 over N, 500 over N. Well, n is 500. We plugged in 500 for n, so 5 over n, over over n would simply means 500 over 500, and 5 over 5, 5 over over 5, 500 over 500 is not going to give us 5. Our answer is 5. Let's look at answer choice B. Answer choice B says 2500, 2500 over n, 2500 over n, and we plugged in the value of 500 for n. 2500 over 500, if we divide top and bottom by 100, two zeros are going to go away. And if we divide top and bottom by 5, 25 is going to become 5, which is exactly what we're looking for. It matches the answer. What does it tell us? It tells us that answer choice B is the correct answer. And if you were to try out C, D, and E, you will see that C, D, and E will not work. Of course they will not work because you cannot possibly have two right answers. Let's look at C, just to satisfy your curiosity. C says, C says, n over 625, n over 625, and clearly 500 over, 500 over 625 is not going to give you 5. And D says, n over, n over 2500. D, answer choice D, it looks right, but it's not right. It is the reciprocal of the right answer. The right answer is 2500 over n. This is going to give us one fifth. This is going to give us one fifth. Not 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 five, but one fifth. It's wrong. And answer choice C. Of course, it's wrong because they're all wrong except the one that we found. C is a B rather. Answer choice E says six hundred twenty-five times five hundred. That's not right. The answer is B. Answer is B. About half the people, about half the people who took the exam. Had no trouble with it. They got this answer, They got this problem right. But at the same time, half the people did get it wrong. I don't know why. Just plug in numbers. Or if you're up to it, if you can handle it, if you can brook it, if you can brook it, you can do the do it algebraically. Would you like to do it algebraically? Let's do it algebraically. Why not? Just for the hell of it. Just for the hell of it. Okay. Let's do it algebraically up here. So we are told, so this is this is the algebraic solution without the plugging in technique. We are told that he spends four fifth of n. Well that implies that implies that he must save a fifth of the n. He must save a fifth of its income. So let's carry, let's pick up from there. So we know now 1 over 5 times n is same as n over 5. So he saves n over 5 dollars in one week. If he saves n over 5 dollars in one week then here's the part. The next step the next step is the reason why most people who are not good at algebra, who do not feel comfortable with the algebra, should not attempt this method because it requires understanding of the algebra. And that involves the next step. If you save n over five dollars in one week, that in turn implies that you must save one dollar in five over n week. There you go. Did you understand this part? For example, for example, if I were to tell you that you that if I were to tell you that I saved twenty dollars 
if I tell you that I save $20 in say five weeks then I must save one dollar I must save if I'm saving twenty dollars in five weeks then how long will it save to how long will it take me to save one dollar one twentieth of the amount one twentieth of the amount five over twenty do you understand or if you put it the other way around it'll be easier to do the other way around If I save five dollars in twenty weeks, if I save five dollars in twenty weeks, then one dollar for me to save one dollar, which should take, to, uh, it should take. Uh, the numbers have to change now. It will take a fifth of the amount. Instead of twenty weeks, I should be able to save it in four weeks, because I'm saving five dollars in twenty weeks. Five dollars in twenty weeks. If I just want to save one dollar instead of five dollars, if I just want to save one dollar, it should take me fifth of the amount. That's what this is. So, n over five dollars in one week. That implies that you should, the person should be able to save one dollar in five over n weeks. If you can save one dollar in five over n week, that in turn implies that in turn implies that if you want to save five hundred dollars, if you want to save five hundred dollars, it should take five hundred times the amount of time. Five over n times five hundred. 500 times 500 times 5 is 2500 over n weeks which is what we found which is what we found the answer to be when we did it with plugging in techniques 2500 over n as I told you before as I told you before only about half the people got it right and perhaps the reason why the other half of the people had trouble with it is because it, they attempted it with algebra and they couldn't handle it, they made some, some, some silly mistake. Don't do the algebra. If you're not good at algebra, just plug in numbers and it should work. When you plug in numbers, you'll get your answer and then plug in the same value of the variables that you plugged in the, in the problem when you're doing it. Plug in the same value of the variable in answer choices and just keep on going until you hit upon the one that works. Do you understand? See you tomorrow, okay? Bye now. Tomorrow, tomorrow we'll do the four problems that you see on the same page, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Those four problems deal with the graphs there. Problem number 17 on this page and then number three other problem on the following page. Those four problems go together because they are all four all, all four of those problems are based on the two graphs that you see there. We'll do all of those tomorrow when we meet. Okay? Bye now.